Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I am here with Rupan the third part four episode number fifteen and sixteen reaction. All right, the previous two episodes, uh, one of the really good best episodes I have to say. Episode number um thirteen, yeah, episode number thirteen. We had like a little section where Rupan was captured by Zenigata and Rupan, you know, again tried and succeeded by the end to trick Zenigata and get out of like an abandoned like an, an abandoned island and everything he was and it was kind of like uh like you know a uh, nice kind of like a throwback because we got to see like you know, a, a kind of a similar situation like you know the tricks that Rupan used to do before in season one like, you know we got a little bit of that and it was classic Rupan versus Zenigata and how you know like both of them were really like you know like one versus one it kind of went and i loved that whole section and how rupan by the end of it was able to um outwit zenigata and get out of there so that was a really good episode beginning to the second part of rupan part four and uh, yeah it, it was really good and the way he was able to get out of the prison was really interesting <laughs> that and the next episode was interesting in another reason because it, it started with the whole leonardo da vinci as uh, a uh, picture mona lisa you know like tr uh, trying to steal that and you know lupin trying to low like you know like uh, some, someone came to try to loan it for himself but you know like the uh, the actual i forgot that guy's name he, he didn't give him so Rupan was actually tasked to bring it for uh, you know like so that he can take it but then turns out Rupan was betrayed by Fujiko who was working for the the other guy and uh, you know like she you know tricked Rupan like that and by the end of it Rupan realized that the one fake uh, Mona Lisa that we thought uh, and Fujiko also thought that she just brought off the street was actually a real painting of Mona Lisa that Leonardo da Vinci made uh, like you know, the, the second picture of Mona Lisa that he drew and uh, like you know there was like a you know, big surprise who drew it what happened why is this here and turns out <laughs> the person himself Leonardo da Vinci is here and MI6 has a little bit a, a big secret behind that as well so let's see what happens. I'm really interested to see how this goes. You know, the whole Leonardo da Vinci coming up. <laughs> that was a twist I never thought it I would see. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. So this is episode number 15. Let us begin. I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here. Think it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. All right, Cleopatra's soul. Ah, huh. yep. Oh, wait, he got it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true you know like like he said the legend oh my god speak of the devil <laughs> yo don't grab it like that it's going to fall my god why was he holding it like that Oh wow, wow! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Yo, he just, he just shot. Oh no. Speed <laughs> limit. Well. Oh, wait, what? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, 
All right, so previous episode it was Leonardo da Vinci, now it's Cleopatra. <laughs> oh God. Hmm. High school undercover. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> he has to go in <laughs> high school. <laughs> Yo! Mr. Yuri. Who is that? Oh no. Wow. Here we go. This is what happened to him. <laughs> yeah. Stop. <laughs> uh. Wait, what the hell is happening here? What? Oh, that diamond. I was like, what is he talking about? Wait, they're making it. Wow. What's happening here? Why are they making a bomb? Oh. Maybe diamond is a better insulator? Yeah. Well. Oh my god. Yo. <laughs> they have a literal bomb behind them. <laughs> oh no. Oh no! Okay. Okay. Evil! Oh! <laughs> like, oh yeah! Ah! Okay! Pro most problematic, okay. Lupin becomes a sensei today. Yes. Probably a time bomb, I guess. <laughs> that should be more important, I think. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> What? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, here, oh my god, everyone has. Is this a guy? 
어? 음. Oh my god. 요. 이거 하이 퍼머넨트리 Why was he so sure that this is the class that Wait, did he did he find it? He needed a diamond for that bomb. Ricky. Oh my god. What? Okay, yeah, yeah, it was him, the same bag. Wait, did he actually find the diamond? Ah! <laughs> Chicken. Okay, something happened. Oh damn. Oh. Oh, so I guess he didn't he looked past it and went away or something. Yeah. Well, he, he Yeah, he he seems like a very like an easily scared type of person. Yeah. He grabbed it like I said. He needed a diamond. So he just casually saw that there was a diamond and he just grabbed it. Oh my god. I'm so curious, why are they making a bomb? Oh! <laughs> The diamond, yeah? <laughs> this guy! <laughs> wow, this guy as well. Wow! <laughs> These people are just... <laughs> uh. This is so... <laughs> There you go. <laughs> well, you better be ready now. Diabolical master thief. Well, it's a diamond, that's why. <laughs> Yeah? You guys think you can take him on? <laughs> oh my god, these people are so delusional. <laughs> they probably bring like a broom or something, like... <laughs> oh my god, these people are... <laughs> Yeah, I'll bring my trusty broom, you know? <laughs> Maybe a baseball bat. Uh. Oh my god, yo! <laughs> I was oh my god, I was correct. Yo! <laughs> Why did the... <laughs> oh my god. 
That's funny. <laughs> hey, yo, what's with the glasses? <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yo. That was close. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I feel, I feel like he's going to fall on it. Yep. Oh, thank you so much. You, he just cleaned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you always you fight with Zenigata, that's why these people are just... Yeah, what's up with the bomb? Who, why? Yeah, let's make a bomb, you know? Oh my god, yo, okay. Oh! I need surgery. 10 million yen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, this guy. Franco. Uh, okay. There you go, I said he was going to ask for money. <coughs> oh boy. So, he, they decided to make a bomb? Oh my god. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what, I also never thought of that. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. It's a secret. Hmm. Yeah, and I don't think so. That's not going to happen. Oh boy, here they are. Oh. Yeah, they're not gonna listen. Kid. Oh my god, is this going to be... Oh, great. Yeah. Oh my god.
<sighs> oh no. Oh, I, I think it's, it's thinking about it. Yeah. Oof, boy. Oh, yep. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, he must have felt guilty at that moment when he ran away, you know? <clears throat> oh, nice. Just calls him chicken. <sighs> mm. Oh boy. Oh, there. Okay, Jigan is there. Jigan isn't it? No, wait. Yeah, that was Jigan, but this is Janigata. <laughs> well, they're like, what the hell? Why is there so many police here? Well, <laughs> yeah, oh god. Hmm? Oh yeah, that's true. Look, it came back to Rupan again. I think this thing changed to look better, so... Oh! That's true, yep! <laughs> Yo! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, if he actually sold it, he could have just, like, you know, like, lived his life in luxury from the rest, for the rest of his life, you know? <laughs> Yep, oh, he's back. <laughs> nice. There you go. Oh wow, she's just <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> what what oh my god, what is this? What the hell is okay? This is <laughs> what was it like? Okay, I guess it again changed owners, and I feel like, like you know, they were kind of comparing, like you know, Cleopatra, like how how Cleopatra made so many people, like you know, change. She almost had. Like you know, like an almost full control of Rome and everything they were talking about. How you know? So I feel like in the end, the diamond went to the person who 
kind of like I, I you could see like you know Fujiko being compared to Cleopatra here like you know there are similar circumstances and everything <laughs> and yeah how she can like you know bring anyone under her control that's why the uh, diamond ended up being transported to her by the end of it ironically <laughs> Okay, is that the end? Yep. All right, so we begin this with a little, um, l little information, a little history lesson, you could say. Talks about the uh, diamond of Cleopatra, and uh, Rupan talks about how Cleopatra was one of the three most beautiful women in the world. <clears throat> Cleopatra seven was a she-devil herself using her otherworldly charm to ensnare heroes like Caesar and Antonius and for a while controlling all of them. There you go. That's what I'm saying, you know, like uh, in the end, it was so ironical that the diamond ended up going to Fujiko, who is the pro most appropriate person in this show that you can compare to Cleopatra because like Cleopatra, she also kind of like, you know, has like you know, using her beauty and everything she can control a lot of people that type of a thing so <laughs> that's why ironical it ended up going to a person who is probably the most suitable for the diamond that is fujiko <clears throat> okay so she talks about how uh in the diamond the, the soul or whatever of cleopatra is there and that's why it always kind of ends up changing people changing owner and uh, Jigen was like, oh, so then this is, you're going to lose it very soon. But Lupin was like, ah, it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a legend, you know, nothing like that. And as soon as he said that, <laughs> in comes Nigata and I, it was so, like, the way he was kind of holding that at diamond, I was like, okay, he's going to drop it very soon. And that's what happened. He just <laughs> dropped it and went to that Ricky guy, his um, bag, while he was riding his bike to school. And uh, <laughs> and Rupan ends up seeing like you know like he's a student and Rupan is like oh boy I have to infiltrate the school now so Rupan infiltrates the school as a teacher and uh, <laughs> they had kind of kidnapped the other guy uh, what was his name uh, something Mr Yuri yeah Mr Yuri that guy who was the actual teacher and his, his, Rupan was going to substitute him so Rupan comes in like you know introduces himself to the headmaster and uh, like while all of this was happening we go to the next part where we see these few teachers talking about how making a bomb and actually making a bomb and I'm like what is happening here why are they making a bomb <laughs> and they talk about how they need a diamond to act as the I think insulator um, okay uh there you go an insulator to obstruct the electricity so yeah i guess um yeah you could say diamond is probably the best insulator i think i don't remember but yeah it was something like that i think but anyways so that's why he was like yeah we need a, we need a diamond for it and <laughs> the vice principal i love the vice principal he always just ends up blabbering everything <laughs> Uh, and he was like oh i wasn't able to bring my wife's diamond i asked for it but my wife was like nah i'm not going to give it to you <laughs> so they're like what should we do what should we do and while all of this was happening rupan comes in where and the uh, uh, the principal introduces him to everyone a top in the uh, top rate teacher from the harvard university that is rupan <laughs> and yeah he will be acting as a substitute teacher and like you know he goes with uh, mr pierre no oh sorry his name is pierre he goes with mr mario i think that was his name yeah mario was his name wasn't it i think so yeah and uh, <clears throat> they go to the class and like he, rupan heard from others um the not others but from the teacher this class was the most problematic one and everyone's just like you know sitting down and everything this kind of reminded me of uh, i've not seen the show but i've heard a lot about it uh, GTO, uh, Great to Teacher Onizuka. I've heard so many things about it, like it's a really good show and everything. I should watch it, you know. 
um but anyways um i like you know like the, the situation here you know all the delinquent students are just there while <laughs> rupan is here as a teacher <laughs> so yeah so the first thing that rupan does is oh um uh, i'll check your bags come on bring everything out and uh, everyone's like ah why should we do that and all but you know they had to and it's like everyone's bags had like either alcohol cigarettes and like you know a lot of other stuff like lighters and everything and just, just like filled with all of these and <laughs> the the guy in the uh, sitting in the corner uh ricky at first he was like no i'm not going to give it then when uh, like you know when pierre comes and like you know asks him he just kind of shoves him away and here pierre gets not pierre sorry mario why i'm calling him pierre uh mario uh he sees the diamond and this part was really i have to say like kind of weird because the first thing <laughs> that would happen to me if i suddenly saw that like a diamond came out from my student's bag i would be surprised and i would kind of just just stare at that for like a couple of seconds and i like you know wouldn't know what to do but this guy as soon as he saw the diamond he's like oh yeah trying to <clears throat> time to like you know uh, grab it and he just grabs it <laughs> i'm like wow that's like how like i said like you know the first reaction at that moment would be disbelief or surprise suddenly seeing a diamond come up out and, and such a big diamond come out from a student's bag so it was so weird that he without any hesitation just <laughs> grabbed it <laughs> anyways he did it so quick that even ricky wasn't able to properly see what happened <laughs> But either way, here this happens, and Rupan wasn't able to find it. Rupan is like, "What the hell happened? I'm pretty sure this was a class. So why does no one have the diamond?" While all of this was happening, um, <clears throat> you know, like uh, Rupan finds out Ricky again, and here talks with him and gets to know how uh, Mario is like, you know, like he calls Mario a chicken because there was a time when he was being bullied, but uh, or beaten, and he did nothing. He just Saw and went away and uh, which we can kind of see like you know, he's like a, a, a person who is a little bit like you know frightened coward type of a person you know and like you know that type and even if he, he was not like that i guess like you know uh, but i guess he was his student so yeah still he, I mean, he was a little bit scared you know and that's why he was he decided to run away and that's why he started calling him a chicken <clears throat> So, okay, all of that was happening. Now, Rupan comes again, and these guys, these teachers, they had actually, like, you know, they had installed the diamond into the bomb, and they are like, all right, it's ready. But in comes Rupan, and. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, where is that part? Okay, he comes in and he's like, oh, can I give that uh, uh, diamond back? And the bell rings here, so they quickly and hurriedly, like, you know, take it and go away. So Rupan was like, all right, trying to do my next part. He, he issues a call card, two call cards precisely. I think one was for Zenigata and one was for them. For their car call card, it was written that, oh, I'm going to come and grab them diamond so they obviously they were like all right we have to fight rupan <laughs> and they're like bring all the best weapons that you can get all the deadly weapons i just <laughs> here i was like all right like you know i was joking i was like ah they're probably going to bring a mop or a bat it turns out two of them kind of brought like and you know, one brought a baseball bat mario and the vice president brought like a, a broom no mop yeah I, I said broom i think i said broom and he brought a mop <laughs> and uh the guy the, the 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 other guy the science guy he he brought like sulfuric acid which i guess could act as like a weapon and i don't know what the the lady teacher did she, she brought like a huge that's a violin isn't it no that's not a violin that's a i think what is it called i think that's a what is it called i think a cell is that a cell uh, Oh, I always like to mix these things up. Uh, I think these are this is cello, isn't it? It's called a cello, I think. 
Let me check. Uh, yeah, it's a cello. Yeah, I think that's it's called a cello. There you go. It looks a lot like violin, but a violin doesn't look like that. Violins are a small one. So that's why I kind of mix them up. And yeah, it, it's a cello, I think. Anyways, and I'm like, <laughs> why did she bring that? What did she think? She's going to whack the <laughs> whack Rupan with that. And oh god, I, I love this part because this kind of shows clearly how much of a like you know difference in ability level that ordinary people and Rupan are in. We always forget this because we always see Zenigata chasing him, you know. And this kind of shows how Zenigata is so much more um you could say competent or uh like you know uh more talented. Obviously, he has been chasing Rupan for so many years and <clears throat> No, he can actually give Rupan uh, a run for his money. Uh, but normal people, <laughs> Rupan is just on another level. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, they come in here and Rupan comes in. Rupan shows, gives his identity. I'm Rupan the third. I'm not Piero. And uh, these guys, like, you know, they start attacking him. <laughs> the, <laughs> the bad guy, like, you know, like Pierre's bat falls down. The science guy, he, he tries to throw the sulfuric acid, it ends up, he ends up tripping on the bat and throwing it in a different direction. The vice principal just mobs the acid away. <laughs> While the, the other teacher, uh, she just, the, the cell falls on her head. And there you go, everyone just lost in a matter of seconds. And Lupin is like, why the hell are you doing this? What the hell is this bomb about? So they start saying their story of at what happened. They all of them were drinking in a in a bar, but there were some mafia people who came in, and uh, <laughs> Pierre kind of knocked one's teeth out. <laughs> and obviously they are like extorting money from them now. So they decided to make a bomb, and yeah, show them who's boss. You know the funny thing in this section when Lupin says that. Like, why the hell do you, are you even doing that? Like, how do your brain work like that? You could easily use the diamond, sell it for money and give them the money. The funny thing here is, <laughs> I also didn't think about that. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. I also really did not think about it like that. I was like, oh yeah, he's right. He can just sell it. <laughs> oh, it's so funny that my reaction and their reaction was the same at that moment. They were like, oh yeah, you're right, you know, like I can, we can actually sell them diamond. <laughs> oh, anyways, um, he, obviously they're like, okay, can you give the diamond back to us? And Rupan is like, nah. And he says like, I'm a thief, you're a teacher, you will live in different worlds, you know, like, and he gives them a little bit, them a little bit of a advice and goes on his own way. <clears throat> and they come up with a brilliant plan of actually trying to apologize to the mafias obviously that's not gonna work like what do you expect them saying oh really you know like yeah it must be tough getting like you know so many money on your hand don't worry you know like we forgive you did they expect that's going to happen you know <laughs> obviously not um they go and try to apologize and the mafias like the guy's like all right let's make you into a target practice you know brings in the uh, the new person in their group ricky and which kind of shows that he was started to he started going in a wrong direction here uh, obviously he's very scared at this moment because you know like he said the, the mafia guy suddenly tells him like oh shoot these people here gives them a gun him a gun and uh, <clears throat> obviously ricky is just a troubled teenager you know like he, he's not a murderer or a, like a criminal He's just like, you know, he's shaking over there. Like he, he doesn't know what to do. And for a moment, a little bit of an anger kind of came in his head when he remembered like, you know, what Mario kind of did to him. Uh, but then it kind of subsided and he was like, no, I won't be able to shoot him. And uh, then everyone starts beating uh, Ricky up. Mario comes in and tries to protect him. And obviously Mario, uh, like Ricky's impression of him changes at that moment. And uh, before the main mafia guy was uh, going to shoot uh, Mario, Zenigata, uh, sorry, not Zenigata, it's Jigen with his, uh, with his impeccable shooting, just you know, shoots the gun away. 
and thankfully at that moment Zenigata comes also comes in and Zenigata was brought here by Rupan's call card and here Rupan says like I'm going to steal the the, the most exquisite chicken or something he said the ultimate chicken <laughs> I love the fact that even though Zenigata doesn't know what the hell the call card meant you know like what what does Rupan mean by a chicken you know like ultimate chicken what what is that even he still came <laughs> he still came <laughs> Because Rupan is the one who gave the, like, you know, um, call card. So even though he doesn't know what he's supposed to protect, you know, what Rupan is going to uh, steal. The fact that Rupan is coming means Zenigata is also going to come. <laughs> he just came rushing. <laughs> he doesn't care about what chicken Rupan wants to, uh, like, you know, uh, rob. He just wants Rupan. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> this is like a great way, I guess, to... <laughs> bring Zenigata somewhere just give a Rupan like you know call card of using Rupan's name I, I I do wonder if there's like any episode like this you know where uh like there's like a third party individual who like you know knows about this and uses this like you know like you know as a as an advantage by like you know making a fake call card of Rupan and luring Zenigata somewhere else I'm not talking about Rupan but a third party a third person you know who tries to lure Zenigata somewhere else by using a fake call card uh, of Rupan and like you know the story kind of goes in that direction and like I'm saying you know like whatever the matter is whatever like you know he doesn't care about what Rupan is going to steal the fact that Rupan uh, actually gave out a call card means Zenigata is going to go there so it's like one of the best ways to lure Zenigata somewhere so maybe uh, someone who has some kind of a grudge against Zenigata tries to do this to lure Zenigata somewhere and you know like bring harm to him or something like that maybe maybe there's an episode like this I don't know Lupin has a lot of episodes so maybe um, anyways uh, so yeah that was that and uh, Zenigata comes in and arrests all the mafia everyone I'm, I'm pretty sure that all the mafia guys they were so shocked at that moment they were like why the hell is there so many police officers at the same place <laughs> obviously because Zenigata came here decided like, thought that Ruban is going to be here so he brought all the police force <laughs> like, poor like you know these, these mafia guys they just <laughs> oh. so all of that was happening now Rupan here says that you know what I think the Jigen uh, I don't believe uh, that the soul is in the diamond and uh, he says oh, okay here, here we go he says this is just my stupid image imagination but I don't think Cleopatra's soul is in there I think this thing changed Cleopatra's soul Oh, okay. I, you know what? I kind of interpreted this in a different way, but I think it's not like that. You know, at that at this moment when he was saying this and he was like, he just threw the thing away and he said like, okay, I'm like, you know, I don't want to like, you know, uh, stop uh, my, you know, the thing that I do now. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stop stealing, you know, so that's why I'm throwing this away. And that moment... The way I interpreted that at, while reacting to it, I thought that, okay, if he actually sells it, he can be very rich and so he might not have to ever do, uh, like, you know, these type of things again. So that's why Rupan says that, you know, like, that's why he threw it away because he doesn't want to stop his, um, like, you know, uh, the things that he does. Where, where is that part? I have no intention of quitting being a thief. There you go. He doesn't want to quit being a thief. That's why I thought like, oh, is, is that why he just threw it away? Because if he doesn't throw it away, he can sell it and he can become like a billionaire or millionaire and he won't have to like, you know, be a thief anymore. So to stop that, he threw it away. I thought of it like that. I think that was a little misunderstand, not misunderstanding, but a misinterpretation at, the, at my part here. Now I realize by reading this section again, he says that the thing, the diamond changes people's soul. So that's why he threw it away because he thinks that the diamond is going to change his soul as well and in his soul he's a thief so if that changes he might stop quit being a thief so he doesn't want that that's why he threw it away so that was a little misinterpretation of that section i i think the way i interpreted it is is actually i think this is how it is supposed to be interpreted to stop his soul from being changed he threw it away something like that 
and after that we see obviously mario and ricky became like you know like has, has like a better relationship now and uh, while all of that was happening fujiko's just chilling in the ocean and in comes a dolphin just throwing the <laughs> cleopatra's diamond uh, like you know and it falls on fujiko fujiko's like wow what a great like you know present thank you mr dolphin and yeah that's where it ends like i said this section was like you know like the, the last part is so ironic and so i feel interesting because fujiko is probably the only person in this show who could be compared to cleopatra and that's why the diamond ended up going to her by the end of it which is so funny so yeah anyways that was uh that was episode number 15 yeah let's start with episode number 16 so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> oh what's this funky music <laughs> Brain Mantis. <laughs> ah, like that. Oh, Goemon is here. Sushi Samurai. Oh, they're gonna eat? Perfect for Goemon. <laughs> Five star. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so they're on a vacation or something? Oh. Yeah, they're on a vacation, I guess. <laughs> uh trip? What is this? Who are you? Oh my god! <laughs> Alright, maybe it's not a vacation. Maybe there's something else going on. Okay. Lupin's day off. Oh, okay. It is a big. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What the? Oh my God! It's Fujiko here. I feel like Fujiko would be in some place like this. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Josephine. Oh, Rupan is also here. Pet dog. Oh, that's the same dog. Oh. Ah, that's why. Well, they can easily have sushi after that.
Yeah, they can easily get this. What? Oh my god, it's Zenigata. Oh. Um, we're on a break today. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> Yo, the dog. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so we have to walk now. Great. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's true. There, there doesn't seem to be a gas station here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't eat before sitting. <laughs> uh. Oh, they... What the... Oh my god. Yo! Oh my god, are they like in the same- Ah! Here we go, no more gas. And I'm pretty sure Rupan wasn't able to visit the toilet as well. So there you go. It's, it's a bad situation. <laughs> Yo, wh I wonder what's going to happen if Zenigata comes now. <laughs> He's like, hey yo, quick. Push quicker! What the hell are you doing? <laughs> what? Oh, okay. Oh, 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 oh! Run! Oh my god! Yo! Go, chicken's hat. Yeah, break. Come on, going on. Oh my god. Oh, he doesn't. Oh no. <laughs> oh. 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 Here you go. You. You. You got your sushi. God. Where's Jigen? Oh, there he is. <laughs> well, we're stuck here. <laughs> mm. 
What dog? Oh god, here we go. Oh my god. That's okay, that's her hotel. That's why I was thinking. Like why is it like a huge dog's photo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no, did he run away or something? Oh! <laughs> well... <laughs> yeah... <laughs> Call her by the name. <laughs> Two hours, oh boy. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, there you go. What the yo, this dog. Yeah! <laughs> kind of like Rupan, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, is it, is it Zenigata? No. Hmm? <laughs> We've got our guess. Well. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he wants that sushi. <laughs> you run out of gas. Oh! Oh my god. Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Damn. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well. Oh. Oh wow. <laughs> the dog is not happy at all. He's like, she's like, oh my god, poor Josephine. 
<laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> this is a social club. <laughs> What's up with the dog? Is there some lady be in front of him? Um. Oh, he just wants to pee. <laughs> I love it. Oh my god. Yeah. No. I'm no, not yours. <laughs> wow. That's not going on. Yeah, definitely he'll be surprised. Zenga is already there. Thankfully, yeah. We got the prior information, you know. Oh, there they are. Damn, they have assault rifles and everything. There you go. <laughs> Well, she's mad. She's like, when is my dog coming? Oh, uh, she's like, stop the ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what to do now? Oh my god. Oh no. Hmm. Well, because you're standing here. <laughs> Let's go to the sushi bar. Hmm. Oh, are they going to like catch up to the ship? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. He saw that. He saw. Okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> God. Yeah, they're going to catch up. Is he going to fly the... He's going to like jump off or something using the car. Oh my god, yeah, I think that's what he's planning. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Yeah, they're here. <laughs> yeah, I think. He, oh God! Yeah, he's going to he's going to fly the car. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Yo, break! And there you go. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Josephine is unconscious. Oh no, there you go. She wants to get away. Oh my god. Yeah, you grab the dog like that, so obviously that's what she's going to do. Wait, did she just jump? She just jumped out of the ship. What? She just jumped out of the ship. Oh my god, wow. <laughs> well, he, he did put, keep his promise, you know. <laughs> Sushi, there you go. <laughs> yeah, as you can say, this is not what I thought it would be. Yeah, what can he do? The dog, the dog doesn't want to be here. <laughs> uh. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> He's like, oh, I said I'm going to eat sushi, but Oh my god, the dog is back here, I think Uh, Goemon is here <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, that was funny. <laughs> Damn, going on had a lot of adventure today. <laughs> uh. All right, that's it. So we begin this episode. This was a very lighthearted episode, you could say. <laughs> it's just them kind of chilling in their own way. Um, at first, we get to see that Rupan and the crew are thinking about getting sushi. But uh, underneath all of that, Rupan has a different mission. He needs to transport a dog, uh, which was um what's her name that lady that lady's dog and she <clears throat> lost it that's why and you know like fujiko was able to track that down probably fujiko called rupan and said something about can you track the dog down or something and rupan was able to track it down so that's how they were going to meet and return the dog to the owner and she was probably going to offer them a good sum of money for that so that was the plan that's why rupan and everyone was going in that direction and while going in that direction there was a good sushi place that samurai sushi place and they were like all right let's take a day off today and while we're going there we can also have some sushi so everything was going quite well you know they were they were all off like you know today they were off duty they did not have enough any work and all but like Zenigata uh, Jigen says, uh, for Zenigata, he does no off day. Unless until he catches Rupan, he, 
<laughs> he would he would never take a day off. So Zenigata is still on duty. So he's just trying to get catch Rupan again. <laughs> oh my god! I love how like the constant um, you know like the constant ah uh, what do you call it? What's that word? Ah. Uh, like the cost, the, the fact that Zenigata, not Zenigata, sorry, uh, Jigen always talks about how Fujiko <laughs> is someone who Rupan should not hang out with. You know, how, like, you know, she, whenever she's involved, everything, like, you know, goes, like, becomes trouble and all. I, I, <laughs> like, I, I love the fact that this is something that, like, you know, Jigen always, like, you know, like, from the beginning of the show in itself. Like Jigen never trusted Fujiko, and it's so apparent. Like, like I feel like a Goemon. This like a Goemon also doesn't trust her, but Jigen's like you know mistrust for Fujiko is just like in like all time high. <laughs> like, and he doesn't like the fact that Rupan always, always tries to help her out and like falls into a trap, and <laughs> so funny. Anyways, um, so. <clears throat> But this it's, this time it was a good um, good deal, you know. Like uh, Fujiko got the client, and you know, like uh, Lupin was able to track down the dog. So they both meet, and then the dog is handed out to them, and they get money. Like it was a, it was a good deal this time. So, and this is a very like you know I I have to say a very uh, not so dangerous deal as well. They're not going to steal something or anything. They're just going to return a dog. So no criminal activity going on here, nothing. It was just a plain job that they had. And obviously Zenigata is just following them. <laughs> so, and the first thing that Rupan does is kind of goes underneath like a bridge. And uh, to, uh, you know, learn, so that Zenigata run past them. And then they stop at like a little, a little like, you know, place. And he goes to the toilet. And... <laughs> Zenigata is also there. The dog, however, was able to warn uh, Goemon and uh, Jigen about Zenigata. But unfortunately, we later realized that <clears throat> it was not that the dog saw Zenigata's scar, but it was those girls that the dog saw. That's why the dog was so like you know, excited at that moment. <laughs> Which obviously Jigen and uh, Goemon mistook. They thought that the dog tracked down the car. <laughs> so okay i got like <laughs> ruban runs away and comes into the like you know car and they're off the gas just is gone now there's no not enough um fuel they're pushing the car goemon is there and <laughs> i don't know why they decided to put goemon in the driver's seat he doesn't even know which is accelerator and which is the <clears throat> brake <clears throat> Oh my god. So yeah, like a little accident does end up happening that like the, the car kind of starts tumbling down. Not tumbling down, but kind of goes speeding down and they almost crash into the, the huge signboard of the samurai sushi. But Goemon was there, Goemon was able to properly like you know <clears throat> stop the car. And uh, yeah, they end up just being stuck over there. No gas, nothing, they're just stuck. So Rupan ends up calling Fujiko and Fujiko is just there chilling, you know, and uh, I'm guessing Fujiko told uh, this lady that, oh, one of my friends found Josephine and they're coming back with it. So, and the lady was probably like, oh, that's great news. Come, like, you know, like, uh, let me entertain you. Let's go to the spa. Let's go have a massage, this and that. I'm guessing that's what happened. And oh my God, this lady just loves her dog so much. Like there's... Such a huge picture of her dog. Wait, um, I do wonder. Oh, I get... They were on a ship. How the hell did she have like a... I guess that she put those brick pictures there herself. I, I'm thinking like, how did the... Sh why does the ship have the picture of her dog? But I guess he, she probably brought the... Um, uh, pictures herself and just hung it over or something like that so yeah 
All right, so that was that. And um, Rupan calls Fujiko and Fujiko's like, where the hell are you? And <laughs> Rupan talks about how Zenigata's on their tail. And while everything was happening, Josephine has run away. <laughs> oh God, they try to find Josephine and they realize that Josephine is actually, you know, like not at that moment, it was not Zenigata that Josephine was excited about. It was those ladies. So, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, thankfully a truck comes in and uh, Rupan gives in a good amount of cash and gets like a gap, like, you know, like petrol and uh, gets quite a few amount of grapes. It's, <laughs> it's so funny that Goemon is kind of excited like a little kid, you know, he's just excited. He's like, oh, I'm not going to eat anything before the sushi, you know, like how little kids kind of get excited when they're going to go somewhere to have like a good meal. Like, you know, like they're like, oh, I'm not going to eat at all. I'm going to eat my heart like in a full amount of food when i go to that place and goema was doing something like that he was he was like nope i'm not going to eat anything i'm i'm waiting for the sushi <laughs> it's so unfortunate that by the end of it he does get his sushi however but he does not does not get his sushi from the place that he wanted to so yeah anyways um while everything was happening again zenigata is back and they end up like, you know, kind of uh, shooting the logs and the logs come down and zenigata gets stuck and here Zenigata realizes where they're going, they're going to the port and Zenigata decides to already go there and kind of, uh, you know, like be ready for Rupan. While Fujiko is having a great time looking at uh, pictures of Josephine <laughs> and Rupan is, Rupan and his crew are just struggling and uh, Josephine has to pee and they meet three ladies. <laughs> this part was so funny when they asked Goemon, oh, what's the name? And Goemon was like, Goemon. <laughs> I love the fact that the dog, <laughs> the dog didn't even care what they called him. Or I think this is her, isn't it? It's a female dog, I think. Yeah. Didn't even think about, or wait a minute, is this a male or a female? Like, it's named Josephine, so I'm guessing it's a female dog. Anyways, um, so yeah, the dog doesn't care, you know, he's just <laughs> calling him Goemon. He does, she doesn't care. She's just listening to them. <laughs> and Goemon, <laughs> and they were like, you know, the ladies were like, oh, Goemon sit, Goemon paw, Goemon, uh, like, you know, lay down, Goemon bang. And Goemon was just standing there, just looking at that bizarre situation. <laughs> A little bit blushing, you know, while the dog is just having the time of his life <laughs> and Rupan and Jigana just kind of making fun of the situation. Thankfully, due to this uh, encounter, uh, you know, they realized, uh, the, the, the ladies told them that uh, there's a lot of police officers in the port, so should not go there or something like that. And uh, thankfully, because of that warning, Lupin was like, you know, already cautious that, yeah, Zenigata's waiting for them. So it's almost evening. They go and they see Zenigata with the full crew of patrol cars just waiting there. While obviously the lady is getting mad. She's like, where the hell is my Josephine? Fujiko, did you lie to me? <laughs> Fujiko's getting frustrated. Fujiko's like, what the hell? Like, you know, he's so late. And Lupin is just thinking about what to do. Now... The ship has already left the port, so Rupan comes up with the brilliant idea of doing a GTA stunt, you know. He just runs up with the car, just flies it above from the, the cape and thankfully ended up on top of the ship. Obviously Zenigata couldn't do that, so Lupan ends up escaping. And uh, there you go, the dog is back, you know, everything is perfect, like it was supposed to be they were a little bit late but yeah at the end of the day Rupan did do the intended job that he was supposed to and the lady then ends up coming starts hugging the dog so much obviously the dog is not happy at all don't do that to your dog you know they'll probably run away just like Josephine ran away from her so yeah <laughs> like it's just it? hugging like this like well, yo calm down and yeah, Josephine is like, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm not having this. Josephine just <laughs> jumps off the ship. I was so surprised that 
he actually decided to jump off and swim to the shore just so that you know like she doesn't have to be with that lady that's how much he hate she hated her like couldn't blame her because you know that the lady was too much like who does like you know like the nails of their dog and who does stuff like this like i don't know anyways obviously the dog was not happy about with all of this so yeah she's like just runs away now i like they did end up fulfilling the mission so i don't know i think they should get some amount of compensation for this but i i, I guess the lady didn't offer them anything like it was a lady's fault that the dog ran away so like rupan and fujiko did their job so they should get the money i i think so but i guess yeah anyways um so after that i love the scene where goemon is just staring at the sushi with two little like firecrackers or whatever on top of it and just staring at it <laughs> Jigen is like, what the hell is wrong with you? There is a sushi. You want sushi? You got your sushi. Eat it now. <laughs> Going on is like, mm, this is not how I expected my sushi to be. <laughs> uh, well, Going on, uh, Jigen is having pizza, obviously. Italy means pizza. And uh, Rupan and Fujiko is also there. Rupan is like, ah, it's fine, you know, like I can you know, steal any amount of money anytime for you, Fujiko. And Fujiko's like, oh really? Okay, then there is like a diamond over there that you could bring for me, you know? Okay, what does she say? Did you know? The museum in Rome is exhibiting a 100 carat diamond. There you go. <laughs> and Ruben's like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'll bring it, I'll bring it. <laughs> Well, Jigen is just looking at that scene, like, you know, he's just tired of this while Goemon is not happy with his sushi at all. And Jigen is having a good time with her, his pizza. All that is happening and these ladies, you know, the dog ends up coming on shore and meeting those ladies again. And the ladies are like, oh, don't worry, I'm, we're going to take you in. And the dog is like, yep, that's just what I wanted. <laughs> oh, God. And that's where it ends. And this is a lighthearted episode. Nothing much happened. No serious developments. Nothing. No such. It's just a, I guess, a, just a, like a vacation episode, like they said, like in you know, Rupan's day off. It was today. <laughs> so yeah. So that's it. Thanks for watching. This was my reaction to episode number fifteen and sixteen of Lupin the Third Part Four. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll uh, check them out so that's it thanks for watching and i will see you guys next week with two more episodes of proof on the third part four until then goodbye and have a nice day